entonces era la mejor, la mejor manera de compartir a Amazon, ¿no? Sí. sí. Necesito la buleada. Sí, sí. El so, tomo 3 de la buleada. Good evening. I'm Omar Acevedo, and I am the Literary Programs Coordinator here at the Mark Twain House and Museum. Um, welcome uh, to this event for You Dreamed of Empires uh, by uh, Alberto Enrique. Um, first, I'd like to thank our sponsors, author programs at the Mark Twain Housing Museum, are sponsored by Connecticut Public Broadcasting and the Wish You Well Foundation. Um, I also want to thank our, our members. I know we have a couple of you in the audience here this evening, but if you're not a member, uh, consider becoming a member. You can receive free or discounted admission to our author programs and the Housing Museum. Um, you'll also be able to get year-round discounts in the store and cafe and much more. Um, you can come up to me and ask me about membership or you can go up to the front desk um, and they can help you sign up. Um, now on to our guests this evening. Our author, Alvaro Enrique, is a Mexican writer who was a Coleman Center Fellow and a Fellow at the Princeton University Program in Latin American Studies. He has taught at New York University, Princeton University, the University of Maryland, and Columbia University. His work has appeared in the New York Times, N Plus One, London Review of Books, and El País, among others. His books include Sudden Death, and have been awarded the Gerard Prize, the Barcelona Prize, and the uh, Poniatowska <laughs> Prize. <laughs> Um, our moderator, Gerardo Samano Cordova, I'm messing up my accent, so I should know, uh, is a writer and artist from Mexico City, living in Brooklyn. He is the author of Monstrillo. I always mess that up. I always want to say Mon Monstrillo, but it's not that. <laughs> yeah. His work has appeared in Apartamento Magazine, Catapult, The Common, Passages North, Chicago, Quarterly Review, and others. He holds an MFA in fiction from the University of Michigan as the current writer in residence at Fordham University. Gerardo has also been known to draw little creatures. Uh, now that I've made the proper introductions, I'll turn this over to Alvaro and Gerardo. Hello everybody, and thanks for coming. Um, so, I'm just gonna ask you questions. Perfect. Uh, so I was thinking, um, you like historical figures, or at least you've written about them. And I was wondering what, if you came to this book thinking about wanting to write about these people, or about the time that this <laughs> book takes place, or everything in between, or maybe um, something else. Yeah. Nothing in between, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for coming in a cold night remote spot, I think. I don't know hard <laughs> folks. I don't know if we're far or close <laughs> to things, but thank you for coming. Gracias. Gracias. Yes, the, the, the historical thing. No, I, I was. I was planning to laugh about Diego Rivera. That, that, that the original, the original, original plan was that. I don't know how honest one can be. And the fact that this is being <laughs> played to the world freaks me out. But, 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 but I was coming out of a tremendously serious depression. I think that there's nothing wrong about speaking. Uh, yeah mental health issues. I was coming out of a tremendous depression that was so so heavy that I even stopped smoking. That's so bad that I even stopped smoking. <laughs> and one day I saw this ray of light, tiny little ray of light, and I used it, I grabbed it and went to buy cigarettes. And and I sat down in a park. It was a sunny day after, after the winter. I was living in Inglewood. New York in, in the park in front of the wood of the park of England. There was this sunny spot and, and I smoked a cigarette for the first time in months, maybe more than a year. And it was like 
no, but my, my old brain returned, you know, which is not a good brain, but is the one I have, have <laughs> the one I know. You know? So, so, so this story, silly story, came mm -hmm. in, in, in which I, I, what I wanted to do was write a short story in which Diego Rivera has a has a dream or falls down. I never finished the story, of course, the story. But, but there's nothing of that story. Diego, Diego Rivera will like, like be in his house or, or maybe in the blue house, in the house of the Calo family, and, and he would be surrounded by all these like, like, like indigenous servants that he would mistreat because that's what people of his class does in Mexico. Mistreat the service people that usually has more indigenous blood than the ones that are paying. I, I'm not revealing any secret or making any enormous scandal about anything. So, so, so he would be like, like not so nice with the service, and then he would fall asleep, and or, or fall simply fall, like fall, and, and wake up in Tenochtitlan. So, yeah. Well, well, his most maybe his most amazing painting is this, I'm, I'm deriving to avoid speaking about the book, but the most <laughs> amazing painting is, is the, this, the, 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 this, I think, in Palacio Nacional, uh -huh. in, in, in the President's House in Mexico, that, that, that is a view of Tenochtitlan from Tlatelolco, as is described by Bernal Díaz del Castillo, in the day in which they visited the market, you know, Tlatelolco. Mm -hmm. so, so I was thinking about that, not just that. So, so I began to work. I, I have. I, I have not read a short story in years, mm -hmm. and maybe decades. No, and that was like maybe I can return to to my orderly life, writing a short story again. Right. That 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 is what I used to do when I was young. Mm -hmm. So I began the, this short story with a scene in which Diego Rivera is having breakfast. That was a really bad scene. And then in the next scene, mm -hmm. there was the conquistadores just arriving on, on November 8, 1519, to Mexico City, to Tenochtitlan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they would be in a banquet. And eventually, the two narratives would get mixed. That is what I usually do in my books, you know, where things end up coming together. So, 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 so I did that scene in which the, the, the empress, the wife of Montezuma, receives the conquistadores in a lunch. Mm -hmm. It was kind of cool. Yeah, it, it was kind of cool. fun. It, it, it was interesting, and, and I have this. We, we can speak about that or not. Uh, I have this long love with with the idea of Tenochtitlan and, yeah. and a, a, a childhood obsession about how how we could how that city disappeared. You know, what, what a crime that that city was destroyed. You know, what a terrible thing that this wonderful floating city, so full of color, so 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 ordered with, with so many virtues, so, so environmentally yeah. correct and, and fragile at the same time, what was destroyed in, in that war. So, so I was there, like working in the palace, in, in the palace where the Spaniards were received. And the next scene in which I should return to Diego Rivera, <coughs> Diego Rivera looked so dumb, so, so, so <laughs> full of limitations, so, modern, so ridiculous. Yeah. So I wrote a scene in which Moctezuma is having lunch. And from there on, I was like, I'm on this. <laughs> like, this is it. Yeah. So I, I, I would have never there, I had never dared to write about Moctezuma. No? Uh -huh. I, I had write, write a little bit about Cotemoc, about other figures that surround him. Yeah. But but I, I I never had there to to get into like like the very heart of the Mexican right. Empire, and in this lunch scene, I was like I, I want to work with with, with this not so yeah. so the the novel just grew up from there. I am yeah. a very disorganized writer. Yeah, there are writers that know what they will write the next day. I never have idea on Monday what I will write on yeah. Tuesday. Uh -huh. to, 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 no idea. There is this, maybe it's a generational thing. Are, are you sure we have to stream all of this? <laughs> <laughs> Carlos Fuentes had this, when he was very young, that titan that, that was Carlos Fuentes, but, but at the same time, 
figure so difficult to deal with when we were young writers. You know? he, he, in, in, in his books, since he was very young, at the end of his books, there was this list of books that Carlos Fuentes will write during the rest of his life. Oh my God. So, so he did all his career like inside his own my mausoleum, no? and that mausoleum <laughs> was his own imagination. No? I'm gonna, and, and, and he pretty much achieved mo most of those books. He was very close yeah. to the end of, of the list oh, when, wow. when he died. I, I can't conceive that idea of writing. No? Yeah. I am a very chaotic writer. Yeah. I, I never know what I will do next. I, yeah. I, I, I don't plan anything. No. Not, not only related to writing. Right. <laughs> and I think that kind of comes out in the book, not as chaos or like, or an ordered chaos, um, but also as play. It's a playful book. Um, and I think there's like a sense of like trying different things and like playing with time and playing with historical versus fiction and also kind of like the expectations we have coming into a book like this because we know these people somehow, somewhat. Like each reader will come knowing something about Moctezuma or Hernan Cortes and their own preconceived ideas. Or even like uh, Malintzin, who's had like different reputations throughout <laughs> the eras, right? Um, and now she's like in like a rebranding phase in like the world in which um, La Malinche is like this different figure that we used to think, right? Yes. Um, and so like we all come with these ideas to a book like this and then you're playing with those ideas on top of like writing them as people existing within this world. Um, and I found that really fascinating. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think for me it's a playful thing. Yeah. I, 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 in, I kind of share that in my experience. I have learned that artists are more like that than writers. Yeah. Art, art, art artists tend to play with things. That there, there is a, yes. so, something even unfinished about playing with things being an adult. But, but I am a playful person. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I have said too many times now, but. I really wanted to be Dostoevsky, you know? I, I wanted to be a very depressing, very serious <laughs> man, like a man, top and a beer, and, and, and I can't. Yeah. And, and I, I, I can't, I, I have a very playful relationship with, with, with literature also, yeah. and, and as a reader, I, I relate, even when I'm a professor, etc., mm -hmm. I, I relate to, to literature always through, through playing. No, and, and I, I like sports, for example. Yeah. That are games. No, I like. I really right. lose an absurd amount of time watching baseball games of the year or soccer. I, I just like playing. Yeah. You know, maybe. Yeah. That, that's why I keep having children. Also. <laughs> <laughs> I like. To, I spend hours every afternoon. No, we, yeah. we, we, we can transform this in a process question, but, but I, I write in the mornings because uh -huh. they are in schools, in school, and I never do anything in the afternoon because I'm always playing with them. Yeah. I go to the park, play yeah. in the room if it's cold, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I, I, I have that kind of relationship. Yeah. Have you, you tried to force yourself into like a more serious or Dostoevsky <laughs> approach to what you wanted to do? No, 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 no. And when someone becomes serious, I drop the book. Yeah. <laughs> so no, no, I'm, I'm, I know contexts. No, yeah. you were speaking about the context of the characters. That right. More or less, we know when, when, when you arrive to the novel. But the, the, if I'm reading a 19th century writer, I know that it will be very serious, and, and, and that they will be pursuing the great truths of the universe. But, but, <laughs> But in general, I, I find that boring. Yeah. In reading and in process, or in just in process? No, in, in reading and in process, which yeah. doesn't mean that I don't read the, the serious writers of right. our time. Uh, I just rather have fun. You know, with, 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 when a character begins to 
people wonder about God, etc. <laughs> <laughs> right and even though there's like the characters in this book they do wonder about their own versions of what God means to them or like what religion or what the drugs that they do um, like make them see kind of thing uh, which is interesting and, it, and even that becomes playful right like there's this moment and I don't want to like spoil anything but there's like transcendental moment for Moctezuma where he hears um, a T-Rex song monolith and that to me was amazing and I was like well now I'm reading something else which I hmm. love because it's nothing that I expected to read um, in a, a setting like this and it made so much sense at the same time like the craziness of it made sense <laughs> Um, and I could imagine that moment more rather than less. But that, I, I think that that's what literature does. Right. You know, put, put things that don't go together together. You know, mm -hmm. and, and, and that I think that's why it survives. You know? yeah. There are still things that you can do in fiction and in poetry that, and I mean, writing an essay or, or in a drama. Maybe I'm not sure about that, so I will retire that. <laughs> in, in which that, that that you cannot do in a film or in a play. That's why I retire. You know? Yeah. That, that, there there are things that you cannot do. That is yeah, to put sure. things that are very remote together. Maybe, maybe to, to put Moctezuma and Mark Bolan together, mm -hmm. you can do it in a in a in a film. Mm -hmm. But but in a Sofia Coppola film for right, example, exactly, yeah. you know, but, 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 or in The Bear, you know, where yeah. the, the, this series where the music yeah. goes, but not with Montezuma, no, and, and, and there is, I think, a connection, I, I, mm -hmm. it, it can sound ridiculous, but, but, but I think that there is a connection between, Mark, everybody remembers Mark Boland, the, the, the singer of T-Rex, there is a connection between him and Montezuma, you know, the, 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 the hair, you know, in all the descriptions of Moctezuma, everybody insists in the fact that he had curvy, hair. curvy hair, which was weird in, in, in that like genetical moment of the Americas. You know? and, and so, so the, the curvy hair, the, the very chest, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, like, like the glam, you know? <laughs> right. the, 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 yeah. the feathers. No, right. Tezuma was a tremendously glamorous character. Mm -hmm. So there is something about Mark Bolan shaking his booty yeah. and Moctezuma yeah. shaking his royal booty. Yeah. <laughs> so so, so that, I don't know. I, I and, and I think that it opens a different door in the novel. No, right. it's, it's the, the, in, in the moment in which this happens, I don't want to ruin anything, mm -hmm. it is where all the worlds really collide. Right. You know, during the whole novel, everybody sing to like each other, sense, yeah. but, but no one has taken a decision. You know? Will we do this? But the, everybody's just evaluating the very strange situation yeah. in which they were. You know? I, I think that there is a truth about fiction, yes. a, a truth that cannot be told by an historian, because an historian has to prove things by but by an archaeologist because they have to find things. Mm -hmm. While a fiction writer can can put together these universes and and produce a theory, you know, a different theory right. that, that, that you cannot prove, but you can feel in exchange, right. you know, that, that you can experience. Maybe, yes. Maybe, maybe that would be the word. And, 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 and that's that could explain what why my relationship with literature is playful. Yeah. You know, because I, I don't want, I'm not interested in, in reproducing reality right. at all, e even when the novel is, is very seriously researched. Right, yeah. And I think that both of those things come out, like a sense of being grounded in research and mm -hmm. things that happen, but also in a sense of like saying, I don't want to completely like marry myself to things that happen. I want to reinvent and rethink um, and also kind of like see what the experience would be to read a different history, right? Because we don't get to see like the consequences if history had been different, 
but we get that sense of like some sort of vindication almost or yes, like a yes. release of some sort of like even revenge. revenge right it's exactly. like, like mean, mean revenge no? right like, exactly like, like impatience with how, how things are I, I, I think that a, a novel produces uh, very clearly a political discourse yeah like, like, it, all, all writing is political I have said this a trillion times, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but if I see your supermarket list, I know for whom you will vote. <laughs> I, old writing is political. If there are organic things, I know. <laughs> Immediately I know for whom you will vote. <laughs> so so, so old, old writing pro produces a political discourse and right. and, I, and I think that the use of a novel, there are many uses of a novel. The, the, I, I don't have anything about entertaining novels, against entertaining novels, I, I don't, but, but, but mainly a novel produces a, a different way of seeing things that, that comes from our political impatience, you know, with, with our political rage. I, I'm sorry, because I have, my life studying this. I'm a 16th and 17th century literature professor, and I am Latin American. Latin American, so I teach Latin American textual production in the 16th century, a little bit earlier, beginning with Christopher Columbus, all the way to Sor Juan. No, that, okay. That's more. So, so I that's have. Okay. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's an enormous. Yeah. It, it, and it's an enormous continent, and there are always new things. Yeah. You know? But, but. That field, I, I have been always angry with what I was telling the destruction of Tenochtitlan. You know, what, what you were telling, how how the world would be if that had not happened? You know, how, how how many things could be better, and of course others would be because I tried to balance in the novels also. But 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 more than anything, the, that that moment in history, the, 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 the moment in which Europeans and, and a, a big, powerful, rich, super-organized society as the Mexica society see each other in the face, right. you know, has, has been misread in, in such an infamous way, in such a cruel way right. with, with the people of the Americas. You know, it's, the Marines singing about the halls of Moctezuma, what, what they know, you know, to, to and I'm not disrespecting the, the, the Marines, but, but let, let's do research, let, let's see who really was Moctezuma, you know, this idea of Moctezuma passing to history as a coward, as a dumb man, as, as a, <laughs> what is proposed in the novel is that he was a depressed man, yeah, but, exactly. <laughs> but, but, but the, the you know, he, he, he was uh, like, by far the most successful emperor that the Mexicans have had. Mm -hmm. He had expanded the empire. Yeah. He, he was just in a really bad moment when right. the Europeans arrived. You know, he, he had broken some essential alliances, thinking that, that he was like pulling too much his power. And the empire was coming to pieces when the Europeans arrived. Mm -hmm. but, but there is this like mis general misreading of, of, of the ancestral Mexican culture right. with, with which I am very impatient. No, that, right. that, that's why Jasmine Caldera walks to, when you were speaking about religious beliefs, etc., when he walks through the citadel of the temples of Tenochtitlan, he sees the Stompantli, the, the place where the heads of, of the sacrificed people were, uh, mm -hmm. and, and he sees it in a different way, no? right. because he's a character which was not impossible, but if he's, he's the only imaginary character. Mm -hmm. he, he and, and the Empress are imaginary. Mm -hmm. but, but, but he's a man who knew Michelangelo. Mm -hmm. so, so he can see the, the proportions, the, he, he can see a different thing right. that, than just a bunch of dead people. Yeah. That, that is how it went through history. No? So yeah. <coughs> to recreate that was important for me yes. as, as, as a way, even of justifying myself as a Mexican, you know? right, it, it's right. my heritage. Yeah, yeah. And Jasmine Caldera, <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine Caldera is like this character that kind of like, 
sees the world not as like this dangerous thing, but like as a beautiful um, new world that he's coming into. Um, and there's so uh, like descriptions of dress and food and um, architecture, of course. And they're so beautifully and carefully and meticulously rendered, lovingly rendered. Um, and I think that comes from, from what you just said, like like this love for Tenochtitlan. And um, there's like a quote in the book. I have it like written down, but um, but it's like how they revere the detail. I'm I'm just gonna pull it out because I have it here. Um, like, um, that sound like smell and taste was a form of prayer for the Mexica. Uh, yes. And, and it, it seems like for the novel too, like those details are a form of prayer for, for the novel. That, that's Lopez Hosting, no? Lopez yeah. Hosting is, is who says that, no? The, the, it's the, 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 when you get high in Chile, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> no? the, 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 for, for a contemporary person, it's just a sensorial thing, you know, we, which is very nice or not, if you don't like it. But, but, but for them, it was a form of prayer, because sweating was a form of praying that was related to dancing, mm -hmm. etc. Said so that the novel is, is not an anthropology documentary, right. you know, it's, a, it, it's fiction, mm -hmm. and, and they are all like up to the up with with mushrooms all yeah. the time and, and yeah. some knowingly and so right. yeah, and yeah, the yeah, Spaniards yeah. not knowingly. Yeah. You know? So 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 there is the, this like double thing, you no? Know? But by one side the or I think of or I, I don't know. I don't have idea of what I was trying to of course. <laughs> <I'm> not, but <laughs> no idea. But 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 there was this this thing at the same time time some some sort of reverence exactly but, but but at the same time to make make it feel real yeah be, because we well i don't know when you grew up but, but i grew up in the 70s in mexico city yeah. you know, and it, it, it was like the apex of the nationalist revolutionary period you know? so so Temoc was like this superhero that that, that, that was flawless and perfect and he was defeated and, and, and I was not interested in that either you know? I, and, and I think that it does a poor service to the past to idolize the figures right. of the past I, 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 yeah. I, I think that to show them like doing the things that we will do even in a silly way yeah. you know, opens a different way of reading a world in which, when we think about, we, we think human sacrifice. <laughs> so yeah. no, that's it. You, human sacrifice. And, and, well, but chocolate, human sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> what about tomatoes? Human sacrifice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. No, and, 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 and that is a that 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 is a distorted idea. No, in, in the first letter of Hernán Cortés, that, that is the only document we have of the written in the moment. He mentions human sacrifices very vaguely. Mm -hmm. It's it's only until the Mexica can become slaves, you know, on, on, until the, the the abuse of the original population begins. That the, in, in Pedro Martin, the uh, uh, he, he never mentions that. You know, he he was in Spain, but but he was the one who got the correspondence, the objects. Okay. The, when, when, when Durer, the artist, sees what, what comes from the Americas for the first time from Mexico, and he sees the people, mm -hmm. you know, he says, this, this is the best organized, hardworking, most beautiful people and objects that I have seen in my life. Mm -hmm. and, and 10 years later, everybody's saying that these are like, like sodomites. You know? They use that word, you know? they make human sacrifice. They are cannibals. That, 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 that was politically biased be, right. because there was an enormous land to occupy, the, the people was dying so they, the, with, with this illness and the wars and everything, so they needed slaves to, to do the European cities that they needed. So, so yeah, to, to humanize, to, to make of that people 
like, like these heroes, these monumental heroes, I think that doesn't help. Right. I, 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 I think that it's better just to imagine that world as it was really, I suppose, yeah. you know, full of failures, full of political miseries, full, full of tiny little things. Right. And definitely these, um, all these characters come out as human, not really as any idols or anything like that. They're very, very human. Um, but, <laughs> Except Conte, <laughs> which I misquoted, but <laughs> 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 there, there are characters that come directly for comics. Right. Conte is Cold one of Cold them. Cold. No, he's this like Zen master. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, he's like a samurai, no, no, yeah. not like an eagle warrior. And Aguilar, the, the translator, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's like a comic character. Yeah, very, absolutely. Very obscure yeah, tattooed man. Tattooed man. And he has gone through a lot and he knows these languages. <laughs> he did. He no. went through a lot. They, they were all people that went through a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, why do you think, like, so if we could, why don't we write his, like history like this way, like in a way that what do you think that is, that, that we as humans can't deal with history as with having the, the players in history as being human? I, I, I think that, that it's been done. You know, I, I, don't, I, I, I didn't invent anything. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, or like in a, a writer is like, like, a, yeah, like a vacuum cleaner you know, yeah. to just absorb yeah. things and recycle yeah. them. Produce like a Play-Doh little yeah. thing with it, but, the, so, but, but the, there is this new way of, of in which the, the history of, of the Americas it's been written, right. and it's tremendously interesting. And, and, and this this doesn't mean that there is no value in the Eurocentric way of seeing history. You no, know? it, it, it's the beginning point. You know, it, it's and, and there are conquests. You know, by Someone, Hugh, Hugh Thomas, Thomas Hughes. I always see Hugh, Hugh Thomas. is just a masterpiece. No, it's a very Eurocentric, very Hernan Cortez centered history of the fall of Tenochtitlan, and it's a, a, a book that you read like a novel. No, you 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 don't sleep reading it. No? it's like I don't know more than a thousand pages, very tight. No, but it's an amazing book still. No? But, but there is a new generation of writers that, 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 that are like collecting the, the little pieces, the, the little testimonies that were left by the original population of the Americas and, and, and telling a history that, that is much more human. Right. In, in, I, I, I think about Mundi, that I think that, that works at Forham. Maybe mm -hmm. you have cross with her. Maybe. Bar Barbara Mundi. Who, who wrote this this book about the transition between Tenochtitlan and Mexico City? That is fantastic. You know? it, it's, it's, at the end, it's like mm -hmm. Tenochtitlan didn't went anywhere. You know? It's still there. Yeah. It's just that you don't see the lake, like you don't see the river. <laughs> there is a parking lot where the river was. There, there are streets where canals were in Mexico City, but it's still there. You know? yeah. and, and that really changes, I think, the way in which. You see your own town, no? which, right. which, which is wonderful. No? Yeah. So, so there are ways of telling that story. The school thing, I, I don't know. Teachers have to deal with a lot of problems. No? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like, like much worse problems. Yeah. Like abstract problem of, of, right. the, of, of how to generate a, a view of history. No? Okay. Nevertheless, I think that there are efforts in the US too. No? To, to, to present a right. way less one-sided right. history, or even like um, like a binary way in which there are evil guys and good guys, right? Or as in this novel, evil guys and evil guys. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The, the, there is Daniel Daniel Defoe. Am I right? The author of. of Robinson Crusoe, uh -huh. and yes, he's Daniel Defoe, yes. He, he, he had wrote this book about the devil, that is <laughs> the history of the devil. And he says, man, in, in the fall of Tenochtitlan, it was the devil against Satan. <laughs> and everybody was mean there. And there is something about that, of course, yeah. because that, that's another thing of the, of the, 
of the Diego Rivera point of view, no, the, the memorializing only one side of history, this one or this one, produces a distortion that, that is not good either. Right. Yeah. And the book is also, well, this book is literally translate, translated. It is translated by but, Natasha. Yes, right. Um, and, but there's a lot of translation as part of the book, <laughs> right? Like, um, languages get passed through different filters that are not only like objectively through language, but through two different people that have two different, maybe like goals to which <laughs> maybe- <laughs> Different um, agendas. Yeah, right? exactly. And so communication or like what is written or like history translated to our modern times, all of that kind of like gets through this prisms, right? Um, I, I, I think that is fascinating. It you is. Know, that this, so I, I obviously because I'm from Mexico City, I, I I could hear, not accept, I could hear an argument saying that modernity was not invented in that moment. Mm -hmm. But I think modernity happened in that moment. No, in, in the moment in, in which Moctezuma and Cortes see each other in the eyes. Of, of, of course big 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 because what is known and what is obvious, no? the invention of colonialism. No? What, what had happened in the Caribbean was just a massacre. It was different. No? It, it, it was just a ruthless occupation. But when they arrived to the Americas, they had to design a system. And, and they take a century to design it. No? But, but after that, the British arrived here. And there is already a system, a, a way of doing things. But in the beginning, they, they had to improvise. They, they don't have idea how to deal with a completely different world that now we own and how we will administer. So, so and, and they invent coloniaje, mm -hmm. you know, as we know it. You know, that, that is the obvious thing. But, but there are other things that, that, that are more, that, that can explain the importance of these moments. The, the, the Europeans saw the Americas as this big rock that, that was between them a nation. You know, what they always wanted was to go to China. They didn't care about the Americas. No, it, it was Tenochtitlan was a problem because be, between Madrid and China there was Tenochtitlan. So Tenochtitlan had to fall so they could arrive to Asia. You know? So so when Tenochtitlan fall, they immediately go to the Pacific and set in very few years. <coughs> the galleon of China, no, they find a route to go through the Pacific Ocean to China and, and well, not to China, they go to the Philippines. But, but the Chinese make a colony in what is today the, Philippine, the Philippines, that is Manila, no, no, that was an, an island, that was a market. And world commerce begins, no, the, the, the globalization begins in that very moment. And not only that, the, the problem of the Chinese economy always was that there was not enough silver to coin, coins, how, what's the verb for coining? Coin. Coining. Make to, coin, to make, to mint. To, to mint, mint, exactly. I knew that there was a word. To mint coins. No? So in, in, in the first 200 years of, of the colonial period in Latin America, silver is minted in Mexico and goes to China and China can integrate finally to global commerce because now there is money running there. No? So, so that, and this is one of, of, of many things, no? Spaghetti, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, there is no spaghetti in, in Da Vinci's cookbook that we all have in our houses and never consult because we bought it in that trip to Italy and it was beautiful and we never opened it. <laughs> no, there is no pasta there. there. There are like dumplings that was what was eaten in Italy, but there was not a spaghetti because noodles arrived with the Chinese cooks from Manila to Acapulco to Veracruz to Spain and then to Italy. So imagine not 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 the Papa Francisco because he is an Argentine. Well, an Argentinian is it's a form of being Italian. <laughs> but 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 but, but the, a, a Pope cannot have a spaghetti bolognese if Mexico City doesn't fall, if Tenochtitlan doesn't fall, because there is no noodles, there is no tomatoes, and there is not enough meat in the world to 
to make a bolognese sauce because what produces the enormous growing protein in the European diet is that magnificent invention of the Mesoamerican people that is corn. Mm -hmm. no, what, what, what produces the, the expansion of cows through Europe is corn that is an engineered plant. No, there is no, if you plant a, a little corn in your garden and you let it grow, it dies and it dies. No, it doesn't reproduce itself. It, it's an invention. No, it was designed by someone some 4,000 years ago in the Puebla Valley. No, so, so nothing of that is possible without this, this, well, it was said in counter, I, I don't like that, I don't like class. I, I, I like the, the term that archaeologists use now, uh -huh. that is first contact. First contact. We, without that moment of first contact in which Europeans and, and Americans see each other and have to negotiate everything for, right. for them. Oh. Yeah. That was an incredibly long answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Does anybody have questions from the audience? How did you prepare to get all the names right? Well, you only had two that aren't. The, 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 what? the names? You only got two people who aren't real, and the rest are real. And, the, the rest are real. You have to go back kind of spend time reacquainting yourself with all of the, the historical figures? Yes, but, but, but with enormous, what I don't like there is the verb to have. Ah. And I did it with enormous, I do it with enormous pleasure. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really like that and I, all I'm waiting all the time is my children to leave the house so I can <laughs> sit down and read this enormous, super boring book. No, but, but the books are not boring. No? Maybe it's because that's what I teach and I'm used to it. But, but it, it's, so that, that historical moment is really interesting. And, 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 and this, the, the way, the, because it, it has been told in a such biased way, there is still full of little discoveries that anyone can do if you sit down and read the original sources that no one reads, not, not because they are not published, because everything is published, but, but because they, they are big, fat, scary books. <laughs> no, and, and, and so, for, for example, there, there is this, this problem. You know? The Europeans arrive in, in November to, to Mexico City, <clears throat> and they live in, in June the next year. You know, Hernán Cortés lives in Mexico City for eight months with all his people. You know? And they, I don't remember if they are five or six persons who were there and wrote about it. Everybody, only Cortés wrote in that moment, the rest wrote later, but nevertheless they were there. You know? All they speak about is the first four days. I swear it, I, I swear it to God. If you sit down and read it, you will see that they just speak about the first four days. So there are these eight months in which they were living in Tenochtitlan. Mm -hmm. That I could spend my life writing novels about that. <laughs> yeah. This is day one, what about day, day five? Yeah. <laughs> what happened, what they were thinking. No, I, yeah. it's, so so if the, I have this very childish relation with, with, with documents. No, I, I just like it. You know, I just have fun doing it. But but the, the opportunity for imagination is enormous. No, because what, what the hell they were planning? No, why, why they stayed? Why, why? There was not a war. They, they were living peacefully there. Hernán Cortés, why Hernán Cortés doesn't write to the king immediately? Mm -hmm. he, he writes to the king in Veracruz saying we are founding a municipal here, mm -hmm. a, a mu municipio, a, a borough here, a municipality here, you know, and, 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 and even when this is against all the rules and makes us criminals and we should be killed because what we are doing, we are doing it. And now we are, I am the municipal authority so I can change the orders. No? And he doesn't write anything else until he's, not a single word, until he's kicked out of Mexico City eight months later to a very big expense. No? He loses hundreds of man, men, he loses like, like more than 10 horses, he loses all the treasure. 
you know, he, he, he spent his life <laughs> in escaping jail because he could never pay what he had promised because they lost the treasure. In, in that. So what he was thinking, you know, when, when he eventually writes what we know as the second letter you know, to the king, the first one is lost, what, 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 he's like, writing an email. You know, I'm sorry I didn't write you. No, I, I had COVID, <laughs> no, so I could not answer your email from one year ago. He's, he's writing to the king to say, well, well, there was a little gap here, but no, this, it was cool, this, this happened. No? So, so what he was thinking about, and, and the thing about the translators that you yeah. say, that, that, that I found fascinating since I was a boy, yeah. no? this idea that, that Aguilar was a slave, in a place everybody knows that is Akumal. It's a beach near Cancun where you <laughs> like swim with turtles to eat. <laughs> it's one of the few things that are well done. The, the rest is like environmental catastrophe. But, but that, as, as it belongs to the people of the community, right. it, it's really carefully done because I understand that it's a source for living, you know, to let people swim with turtles, not killing the turtles. You know? <laughs> it, 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 it's an easy operation. So, so, so he had been a slave in Akumal you know, for, for a long time. And, and when Cortés arrives, he says you know, to the people of Cozumel, I would like to have, I, we know that there are two Spaniards there. Can, can you bring them to us? And one of them stays because he became a Maya warrior and was not ready to go back to Europe. As Jasmine Caldera, there, there was a lot of people that just stayed. Right. And, 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 but Aguilar says, no, yeah, I'm, I'm going to return to my God. So he, he speaks Maya and Spanish. And Malinali, a slave that they found in what is today Tabasco later, speaks Maya and Nahuatl. So through these true translators, they can speak to the people of Tenochtitlan. You know, they, they can speak to the emperor. You know? so, so, so what makes possible the trip to Mexico City is the articulation of these two translators. But they were not Natasha Wimmer. <laughs> I mean, who knows what they were translating? Right. They surely had their, their own agendas. Right. No, I, I, I think that Malinali was just taking revenge as everybody. Right. No, no, they, they, so, but, but, but it's fascinating, no? this idea, everything that was said in that moment that would change the world forever was a broken telephone. Clearly, no one understood anything in that moment, no, because who yeah. knows what they say, no, and, right. and the, the 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 consumption of magic substances, <laughs> yeah. the matter of magic substances, it's a real thing also. Mm -hmm. you know? so, so who knows when they <laughs> when they spoke, when, when the informants of Sagun, eighty years later, told him the story of how the rituals will you know were done. Who knows what remember them, what right. not, because it was a way of praying, no? yeah. to just put yourself up there yeah. and, 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 and let the gods <laughs> talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a really long answer to a very short <laughs> question. So. Any other question? So there's this, do you think yourself as participating in, or after having written the book, this kind of really interesting fictional reimagination of first encounter, thinking of like uh Lord Day's civilizations and you know, there are a whole variety of different kind of variety, different fictional revisiting to this uh um Bilami's retelling of uh Kovac a couple years ago. Yeah. 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 Um, is this a thing? But uh, you know it's a great I mean is it a thing you want to be associated with? You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's a universe I don't even know well. You know? I, I am... But we always end up speaking about Moctezuma and Cortés because they are like so sexy. You know? it's, it's, it's the story so good. You know? and the city was so magnificent. So, so we're like lured right. to, to that. But, but when I was writing the novel, and that I remember other things now, but that I remember. I was thinking about Borges and Julio Cortázar. I, I was not thinking about like real historical things. I, 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 I just... Streaming. 
<laughs> I, 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 I just find writing about my own belly button very boring. No, I, I don't want to be a writer that writes about a writer living in Harlem of Mexican origin. I, 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 I'm not interested in, in, in all these new forms of realism that, that, that are very frequent here in the US and, and in, in Spain mainly, but in Latin America. I, 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 when I want to be the press about Mexican reality, I read the paper. I really don't need to read a novel about more drugs and violence. I, I really don't. So, so I, when I was writing the book, I was thinking in, in fantastic literature, in, in the terms, in like Cortazarian and uh, Borgesian terms, no? that are authors that are distant to us. Yes. No? I, I don't want to mess with Rulfo, no? I don't want to mess with Juan Jose Arreola because they are so close. But, but I can dig in, in that fantastic, in, in, I don't know, Argentinian tradition. And, and, and the book is full of the strategies of, of, of like the writing in Latin America of the 50s. You know, it's, I, I am no one to tell a reader what to read in a book of mine. No, no one. I, I'm thankful. I have four children. It's great that if you write, I will be thankful. And you can think whatever you want about it, and I will still be helpful. <laughs> thankful. No? But, but I never considered myself a person who wrote historical fiction by any means. And, and if you read the book, you will see that even when the detail is like obsessive, it just doesn't happen what happened at all. No, it, it's a completely different retail, and, and, and the characters are not like they were, obviously. Who knows how, how we know? But whatever we know. So, so, so I don't. I, I think that my work connects with this, but again, I'm not one to tell how to read my books. No? The, the, los, la tierra es de quien la trabaja, and the books are for who, whoever reads them. You know? the, the, but, but I think that it, it has more to do with this new, like generational right. That, that, that wants to distance itself for the, from the great figures of the boom. These like enormous novels that would like tell the history of the universe, mm -hmm. and phallocentric, and, 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 and the, the whole history of Colombia, the whole history of Mexico, that are great novels. You know, I just because I teach, I read The Hundred Years of Solitude last year, and oh my god, what a novel, what a novel. But, but, but there's nothing else to do there. So, so there is this new generation of writers in Latin America writing horror, for example, writing something, uh, uh, science fiction, but using the, the rules of literary fiction, of, of, of producing like, like an hybrid there. And I think that my work would be more related to that than, than to an effort to rescue things. No, I cannot rescue myself for it about the history of Mexico. I, I see it more as, as, as an opportunity to, to, to produce literary spaces than, than to like review history. You know that that I'm much more humble than that. You know, I, I'm, at the end I'm a storyteller. You know, I, I can't avoid telling stories. Okay. Uh, but also Carmen Bullosa, you know, thinking of uh, some of her work. And so I was wondering if, if you could comment on the relationship or going to conversation with her. Do you want to 
going to stir. No. <laughs> well, Car Carmen is a very important figure for me because we are from the same neighborhood and, and I knew her when I was a really, really, really young punk. <laughs> and she was already a writer. Uh, every time I publish a book, I think Carmen had already published that, you know, the, the, her novel of pirates, that is fantastic. She has a novel about Moctezuma also, that I had not thought about until now. But my previous novel in Spanish that will come later in English, it's a Western, as, as Carmen did. So, so, so Carmen has been like this important, I don't want to say maternal figure, because this is not therapy. <laughs> but the, the, she, she's an important figure for me, and I still see her a lot. And, and in my everyday professoral life, I, as you, deal, as I suppose, deal, deal with, with an enormous group of Latino students, always respectfully understanding that my experience of Latin America is different than the experience of, of the Latino culture. No, we, we share Spanish, no, we, we, we share many things, we, we eat the same things, we, but, but it's a completely different es experience that I don't completely understand, no, that I'm, as, as, as all of them. No, I, I am always like, trying to understand the U.S., it's white Americans, but, but I, I don't understand many things. And my relationship with the la Latino community is similar to that, o of course, there's reasons why I live in Harlem. I, I feel more comfortable. I, I rather go to the daily and speak Spanish than English. It's a, a very simple thing. You know, I like the same music. I, I was raised with similar values. And in, in, in that sense, I, my, my impression is that my, my conversation is mainly with the bag of Latin American literature that was big enough. You know, it's, it, it's big enough to be that, like, compressed by Fuentes, García Márquez, Rulfo, that those gigantic figures. So, so, so when I arrived to, to, to Latinx fiction, I, I'm, I, I arrived to it like, like I arrived to American fiction or to Russian fiction, you know, more like a visitor. You know, I, I don't teach it differently than you. So, so I'm, I'm just a reader. Nevertheless, of course, that there are many places where it connects. And, and whenever you are in a public space having a conversation, you discover that you are much more closer than, than you thought, you know, because heritage is heritage. You know? and, and so, so that more or less paints. Uh, I, I consider myself a Mexican writer. But it's which is different and not, but but is different to be a Latinx writer. And I say this full of respect no? and, and admiration for the Latinx tradition that that has had it tougher than us. That that is the truth. No? I, I I grew up unconscious that I was Mexican. Well, it's very difficult to be Mexican, so it's impossible not to be conscious of being Mexican. But 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 everybody was like me. You know? Everybody had the same heritage. With uh, you know, I, I I don't assume that I could understand how it is to grow up speaking Spanish in the U.S. You know, eating tortillas in the U.S. etc. etc. You know, I, I I just respect. That's Bora Milutinovic, the <laughs> director of the national team of Mexico, used to say, I respect. <laughs> I was just thinking about the argument of greater Mexico and how that's never, you know, it's never not been true. Uh, I'm Chicana, I'm from California, and a lot of these texts are border texts, but they're historical fictions and they're really resonant. I think, it's, I, think I can foresee myself teaching your book and some of these books that I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. My children are. Latinx, you know, and, and they have a completely different relationship, but also with language, you know, for example. You know, they, for, for them, Spanish is a kitchen language. You know, it, 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 it's a language that, that yeah, it, it's different. You know, my ex-wife, Valeria Luiselli, with a child, and, and she said that Spanish, no, that English, Spanish is her mother language, 
an English her daughter language, uh, like the, which is this of Valerie's very little brilliant. It's, it's a beautiful way of yeah. putting it. You know? it, it it's, they, they relate to Mexico in a completely different way, in which I relate. They would never say Mexico, for example. Right. No, but, but, but I insist that I'm, I'm more with California. You know? My, New York has this Caribbean thing that I love. You know? but when I go to Chicago or to California, I'm like, I could live here. <laughs> I could perfectly live here because it's closer, not to is the Mexican tradition living there. I like what you said. The, the, the greater Mexico. I love that. that. Yeah, the Chicano scholar has put that forth. The greater Mexico and studying. Mexico, in great, as greater Mexico, so all over the Southwest, there's right. something that's, yeah. you know, focuses yeah. a change, forces a change, but the people have not changed, and, you know, now in California, we are the largest numerical group in the state, so, yeah, things are changing quickly. Yeah, uh, yeah it, it could be a problem, but this is not a seminar, this is not a seminar, yeah. but, but, <laughs> but it could be problematic if you look to the South and not to the North, you know? I, I I don't know what our Guatemalan and Honduran and Salvadorian brothers and sisters would, would think about the notion of the Greater Mexico. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in, in, in downtown Guatemala, city now boiling politically for good. Finally, another in, in the Cathedral of Guatemala, there there is this plate that says, you know, this cathedral belongs to Guatemala." and not to the imperialist Mexicans. <laughs> the first time I saw it, I was like, <laughs> look, at we are the historical underdogs of everything. You know? <laughs> we will never win the World Cup. You know? <laughs> What's this? No? How? And that, I was very young, and that like, changed completely my, my point of view. No? And, and, yeah. So, so, so there is a complication. I suppose that we can think in Maya, and, and it's a beautiful discussion to have, I think. Did you also want to comment on this question? Um, I think I have a similar experience as Alvaro. Um, and the, the big difference is um, that I write in English. I did grow up in Mexico, and I, um, I, I did my undergrad here, and then I went back to Mexico, and I lived in Mexico City for many years of my adult life, and then I came back to the US. Um, but I write in English, and so that part is different. <laughs> and my relationship to language is different. It's not that I can't write in Spanish, because that's how I started writing. But like the only, um, but also I don't think I can write the same things in English that I can in Spanish. Absolutely. Um, and also, I write like, what is quote unquote literary horror, which is, I don't know, it's like a weird thing. Mm -hmm. um, but in that way, I feel more akin to like um, Latin American authors that are kind of like working in that space contemporarily. Um, and there are some authors here in the US who are also working in that space that are BIPOC but not necessarily like Latinx um, necessarily, um, but there are more younger people that are working in that space. Not only horror, but like fantasy and sci-fi, also because those genres are like, people are fighting for those to not be like stupid genres, <laughs> or, you know, like um, that there's a lot of value in writing within those traditions um, and kind of like making them your own within and it makes sense in the US for like people that have like historically been marginalized yeah. to use those traditions that have also been marginalized to kind of like give voice to a new to new voices right to say like realistic literary fiction which was like a tradition here that is very white very heterocentric um, to kind of like reject that and say like we have we we come with new voices and those voices are supported by genre traditions. And so that's very interesting to me. 
it's in Latin America, it's impressive, no? Mm -hmm. Samantha Schwebel, yeah, yeah. amazing. Mariana Enriquez. Mariana Enriquez, Monica Ojeda, it's, it's <laughs> one after the other. No? Fernanda Melchor. Fernanda Melchor, of course. It's yeah. an amazing explosion yes. of writing in, in, in lower, not, not low key, because it's not low key at yeah. all, but, but, but it's generous that were despised by the older exactly. generations. Maybe my rejection of the term historical fiction has to do with that. Well, I'm a literary writer. <laughs> whatever that means. Really, really, whatever that means. I think we've reached that time of the evening. Thank you very much. Uh, but please, um, Alvaro, do you want to sign some books? Yes, of course. Uh, and if you have a garden book, we still have some here. Uh, we also have beverages. Something else. Uh, I guess you have to drink it before you leave. But <laughs> it's alcoholic. <laughs> but thank you so much. Thank you so much. No, thank you for coming. And now I'll turn off the YouTube and you can say whatever. <laughs> I already said it.